Welcome back. It's still plus politics. It is 15 days after the hashtag NSAS protest led to the massive destruction of public infrastructure in Lagos. Now this includes 80 BRT bosses, the High Court of Lagos, the Lagos DNA and Forensic Center, scores of police stations, and the Lagos state government has estimated at least 1 trillion naira to rebuild damaged facilities. Now, the worry is that the amount is the entire estimated budget of Lagos for 2021. Today, the Kaduna state governor, Nasir El Rufai, pledged to assist Lagos, the nation's commercial heartbeat, rebuild the state I mean, to rebuild from the state alone with 34 other colleagues of his governors, that's the counterpart governors. How realistic would this be? Joining us to discuss this, we still have uh, Biodun Shoumi, a public affairs analyst, and we also have uh, um, Okenwa still with us to join us for this conversation. But before we start that conversation, let's take a listen to what uh, Bajabi Amila did say when he visited Lagos to look at the destroyed facilities. It was going to cost about a trillion naira to rebuild Lagos. That, that makes my heart heavy. And I asked the governor, I said, what's the budget the, for Lagos State? What are you planning? And he told me that they were planning in a budget of almost a trillion naira. So if you're planning a budget of almost a trillion naira that will cover salaries, overheads, uh, capital, growth, development, and now you have been forced to now look for a trillion naira just to rebuild and compensate. You can see that we're not making them, we're actually going, we're, we're not, we're going, we're moving backwards in reverse. Welcome. That was uh, the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Femi Bajabi Amila. Let me start with you, Okenwa, before I come back here. Um, I often hear this that um, it is very, very easy and very, very, you know, it doesn't take much time to destroy things, but to rebuild it can be very, very Herculean. If you were to be in the governor's shoes now, what kind of help will you be seeking for? Uh, well, uh, if I'm, I were to be in the, uh, the governor's shoes, uh, particularly uh, the Lagos State Governor, uh, first he's been able to estimate uh, the what of the damages, uh, which is estimated at, uh, at uh, 1 trillion naira, almost equivalent to uh, the projected budget for 2021. So since you have uh, uh, maybe that five governors, other governors trying to, uh, to assist, uh, what I should be looking at as the governor would be that if the whole of these uh, uh, other governors that are involved uh, could assist with um, uh, maybe like uh, 10 billion each, you understand? You should be talking about like raising up 350 billion uh, from the governors. And while Lagos state government will now have to, you know, reach out to other relevant stakeholders, you know, investors, uh, find ways uh, they could find a way to like uh, uh, reinvest or kind of pumping funds into uh, some of their sectors where obviously, you know, nobody anticipated these uh, disruptions, which were quite very massive. And I love the way one particular bank in Nigeria responded. Instead of like uh, uh, positioning their body like as though they would be looking for compensation from the government, they rather made a, took a move uh, to like announce uh, availability of 5 billion naira that can be accessible by young persons that would want to do businesses. So I believe that not all the businesses that were destroyed should entirely depend on the government uh, for reparation. You know, some of those uh, organizations that have the funds could also be of assistance. It's a corporate uh, responsibility to rebuild at this particular point. And it shouldn't be left entirely okay. for the governors because interestingly, Many of these governors would be reaching out to, to assist. When you look at the deployable state of infrastructures in their states, you know, even without destruction, look at the road. Please don't go there. I'm coming to that part. You may find out that when the states, 
they hear the Lagos, they will not be happy with them. I, I'm coming back to that. that. That's a very serious issue uh, I was expecting us to also go into later. But since you have touched it, is that just a... Because, okay, let's, I, I think it's important we put it into context. What they said is they pledged to assist the Lagos state. Assistance may not necessarily mean financial, because the financial there looks like that's just a, uh, 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 what is not possible. You remember the, the, the moment of uh, bailout, where a lot of states could not pay salaries, and now you want to go and help Lagos? What kind of assistance should we expect? Well, in the first instance, um, pledge is one thing, cash is another thing. <laughs> do you play to the media gallery, look good, or in reality, do you assist Lagos? Um, in the first instance, I'm not going to go into the issue of one trillion naira for the worth of that, because I don't know how they're calculated. Because when you look at even roads, we have people... Born. I don't mind if you can talk about it. Yeah, we have roads... Because we are talking about 88... BRT buses, new buses. Yes. We're talking about a building on Lagos Island. You can imagine MPA. the cost. Not We're talking about the, MPA. It's not only that. When you look at all the roads, people burn tires on roads. Do they know the wear and tear on that roads? Hmm. Over a period of time, when it rains down, by next year, you start seeing portals in those areas because we've destroyed you know, the fabrics of that road. But that's a different matter. But what you see is this. We have created a youth hmm. as a people, irrespective of wealth, who are capable of destroying public facilities that they will end up needing to use after protest. Are the BRT buses burnt today? Yes, lost to government. Government is under obligation to replace them when they can afford to replace them. Hmm. But at the end of the day, go and look at the cost of transportation on the road today. It's gone spiral upward. At the end of the day, is making people, those who are poor, poorer. Look at the burnt, uh, burning of uh, news media houses in Lagos. What do they expect in those areas? The local economy in those areas will suffer. Why aren't we thinking about it? We've thought about, I mean, it's happened before. We had the June 12th West subsidy scam. There was nothing like that. It's one of the things which our youths need to learn from and say, look, we don't need to go down this route of destruction. Uh, otherwise, we'll end up paying for it in a bigger way, which is what is happening now. When you look at um, what government intends to do, what Erufa is talking about, is to say to contribute to Lagos. I don't think they need to contribute to Lagos. Lagos can come out with its own Marshall plan with a view to come out of this crisis within the shortest possible time of three years. Um, and this is exactly what I mean. All they simply need to do is raise by 5% you know, the taxes being paid by companies and uh, luxury houses, you know, VI, Koi, VGC, Maguru, and all that, you know, just by 5%, they will end up paying this bill. So we don't need states like, you know, so many poor states, Jigawa, Ikiti, Osho, and so many of them, uh, uh, Benue, you know, and all that. Um, but but everybody sounded like someone who had uh, got in the backup of other state governors. So I'm asking, the last time those governors came here, probably we missed out when they made that promise or it was already disclosed to the media. So what kind of support um, can they give? Is it just going to be moral it's in terms only, of visiting? It's always going to be moral. This is a country where you have a budget and that budget does not have cash backup. So you can have promises, no cash backup coming from those state governments. Believe me, at the end of the day, legal state government will have to carry is burden. Now, when it comes to intervention, we are in a federation. It should not be the responsibility of those state governments. They should apply the, their resources to their own states. Lagos should be given a special status as a former federal So capital. that's a better way of assisting Lagos now? Absolutely. It has to be federal government that should give legal state special status. Even if they don't want to give cash for rebuilding the economy of Lagos you know, that was partially destroyed. Grant legal special status, that hence the problem. The money to rebuild Lagos will come from that. So the ball is in the court of federal government, not those governors, because the cash backup will not come from those governors. But the federal government and Lagos state government can net it off through the mm. internal, I mean, on internal revenue collection. So that is more feasible than what the governors are talking about. Okay, I I'll come back to what the governors have said. Okay, well, let's look at uh, what... Uh, 
uh, uh, show me, you know, slightly touched on. How can we avoid this kind of uh, wanton destruction? Trust me, what lessons have we learned, you know, in terms of the people, which he has mentioned, and also the government? Uh, let me say that uh, the destruction that we saw was avoidable. Unfortunately, uh, the government did not leverage on the opportunity for dialogue that were presented uh, by the protesters. For someone to protest for seven, week, uh, seven days of the week and no single destruction. I think what the government ought to have done is, instead of uh, declaring uh, Operation uh, Crocodile Smiles, and what we want, want to ask are uh, those cro 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 crocodile smiles, indeed, what the government ought to have done is to initiate dialogue, you understand? You know, make our time to see with the people. Those concerns that we're raising are actually things that, you know, the government should have been able to, like, find out what are the real concerns surrounding these four, uh, five points demands. How can we address it? Because, of course, Nigeria is not uh, owned by the leaders. Okay, well, let me interject. Nigeria is owned okay, by well, Let me interject. City. Sorry. Since we're trying to find a solution, let me interject. Let me remind you that... Um, whether it can be trusted or not, the governor visited the protest site, read out the names of people that will, that, that will receive compensation, read out the names of the officers who perpetrated some of these issues, took their letters straight to uh, uh, Abuja, to the president. What more do we need to do to avert this? Because what you mentioned seems not to capture these issues I've raised. Like when you are talking about like the governor meeting them, are you talking about after the dark two day, Tuesdays or no. before the dark two, the Bef dark two days? Before the, before the shooting, before the attack, before the okay, protest. Before. Yes, probably now, because if, of... If, if, okay. if the government actually did this, and then now with, the, 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 with what we saw thereafter, like military intervention and then uh, the, the sporadic shooting, uh, which the government at the first instance you know, kept denying that there were no fatalities. I don't think it is consistent with the body language that uh, was demonstrated before them. What we have expected is continue the dialogue, give room for peace. Okay. I mean, when people are protesting peacefully, it doesn't do anybody any harm. But then when you, like, like a, a wise man rightly, rightfully puts it this way, he said, those who make peaceful resolutions impossible, make violent, violent revolution inevitable. And according to Martin Luther King, he said, riot is the language of the unheard. Particularly, particularly, I do not believe that the destructions were entirely caused by hoodlums. There were also some women in Nigerians, like let's say someone, you lost your younger brother, you lost your elder brother in the course of that protest. I mean, it could go to the point of like trying to do something to show your anger. Okay. Because, of course, why out is the language of the unheard. So why we do not support the destruction? Because, of course, when you are destroying public properties, you are actually, like, stopping some people's jobs and all the rest. But beyond that, I believe, and I want to submit, that this would have been avoided if the government traded the part of diplomacy. Okay. And that is citizenship engagement. Okay, engagement, Chukuma. I, which I, is expected. Trust me, um, you... you done a lot of uh, diagnosis, we will come back to the treatment later on. Now, he has mentioned some important issues. I'm looking at the way forward because if you watch that statement, even the governor said, while they've moved on, that's the word he used, they've moved on, but they will not allow criminal elements to do this again. So I'm saying that, good, you've moved on, where is this money coming from? Like you've mentioned, it's going to tell back on every one of us. But I'm saying, how do we avoid this destruction is massive or was massive. You remember that when we had the xenophobic reprisal attack, we thought we, we saw destruction, but that was a child's play. When we saw all kinds of attack, it was never this, you know, terrible. So I'm looking at the way out. Yeah, to be honest with you, I look at things differently. Um, in the first instance, I don't think the governors are uh, being honest. Well, don't let me use the word honest. I withdraw that. I don't think they grab the full uh, realities of the situation. The question is this. How come 
the past protests were peaceful. And then when, including the first subsidies come, you know, peaceful, people were allowed to move around, nobody's rights were infringed, people, you know, moving into, pa into, into parks, Ghanaian Fire Me Park, where at the point you have two million people and people are going about, no crime, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> well, I don't want to refer to myself. We should begin to ask questions. We can blame these youths that they did uh, make some errors in terms of their tactics and approach. We should also ask ourselves a salient question. Where are those voices that were supposed to guide them to be the vanguard, even if they are not providing leadership at that point in time? We should not rush to condemn the kids because we saw the evolution. What we saw happening now was because the attack on businesses in Nigeria when Nigerians were under attack in South Africa was more or less not condemned by all, but condoned by all. Mm. And because of that, we've seen how it has translated you know, into mm. what we have seen on even internal struggle, you know, internal crisis within Nigeria. So we know what it is. What we need to do now is people should begin to ask people of, who can influence public opinion, people who have a measure of uh, influence on what's going on in the country, to begin to address people's mind. We need to reorientate our youth. We are beginning to forget the fact that many people are so brutalized. We are forgetting police officers who saw their DPO you know, being dragged and killed you know, in their presence. We've seen police officers who saw their colleagues being killed and they are mourning quietly. So also in the civil society. So we need to begin to start a process of healing the country. That is very crucial. It's as good as also the infrastructure which we need to replace. You know, you can replace building. Can you replace a life? We need to ensure that our police officers are supported psychologically, you know, with psychiatric services or call it psychological services, which is better acceptable. Also, the larger society, we need to start a reorientation of our youth and people with conscience. You know, those who are supposed to act as vanguard should begin to play their role in terms of explaining to the youths, letting them to understand that, look, you will end up paying the price for destruction of public property. It does not remove the fact that they have a right to protest legitimately. But what the governors are saying, this is the last time we tolerate it, is totally unacceptable. The moment you don't heal wounds, you don't focus on people's problem. The moment, we all saw it coming. We saw the country boiling. People like me, what did we do? There's so many people like me. What did we do to amplify you know, the views and the pains of the youths? We did little. We did something, okay. but not enough. The other show, I'm going to allow you to round off this conversation, but let me quickly get uh, 60 seconds uh, final take from uh, Chukuma Okenwa. Um, some people will say that at the time, uh, government got confused on how to go about it. That, oh, we thought we've uh, responded to the five demands. No thanks to the fact that at the end of the day, lives were lost. And that's a very good point uh, Biodo Shoumi has raised. The buildings can still be replaced, but what about lives that have been lost? So put this in context. What, yeah. How do we go through the healing process? Okay, part of the healing process would be to acknowledge that there are wounds at the first instance. Because the situation where we live in denial, like first instance, the question was, were lives actually lost? Were those involved in that uh, mayhem? Were they military? What led to that uh, uh, a peaceful protest turning into violence? So if we get to like the roots of it, and then social media should it actually be a threat to the government or actually a channel for the government to get feedbacks, credible intelligence that will help the government to monitor the concerns of the people. And I believe if the government were able to engage actively on all of these platforms, that we are there for young persons to channel out their grievances. I believe the government would have been in a position okay. to contend that. And for future healing, the government should be able to like monitor like developments. What are some of those misconceptions that are out there? You do not tackle a misconception with other falsehood or confront falsehood with the truth. Hmm. And I believe the government has a lot of things that are unsaid. And when it is said the right way and certain issues are cleared around, including the SWAT issue, you understand? 
I believe young persons can be better comforted okay. that the old SARS is not the same persons that are just make up like the SWAT team. And I believe these are part of the demands that young persons need to know what is the state of some of those uh, former SARS officers that perpetrated some of those crimes. And I believe the Thank government still have that opportunity to clear some of these down. Thank you for all the solutions to provide. Let me allow you to round off this discussion. Mm. Uh, I must say that um, there is a way out. It appears the wounds are still locking up right there. Uh, we, there are one or two information that some still feel they will go back to the street. We experienced that in Abuja. After this, some people went to the street. They went to the international airport to paint the floor mm. with NSAS. So, yeah, the, the issue is the, um, to round up, is the how NSAS has transmuted. You know, it's gradually becoming a symbol for youth protest against misgovernance. That is what we are beginning to see. As long as people have realized that SARS is not a problem, it's part of the problem. It's just an institution within the Nigerian, a section of an institution within the Nigerian police force. So you have other issues. Police brutality occurs on a daily basis in police stations, and people encounter them on a daily basis. And you cannot blame the Nigerian police officers too much about that, because they, they get the necessary training? No. Do they get kits? They have to buy their uniform, buy belts, buy boots. Even in some cases, some With are money for paid bullets. by us. <laughs> you know, you know, you know, by us at the thing, at the toll gates. Uh, what I mean by toll gate checkpoints, they have to fight for promotion. They pay for promotion. Many people are not aware of this, mm. so they have. To, even if you pay them a million naira a month, they see it as their legitimate income because. They have to pay for promotion. They have to take bribes. So we all know what the problem is. The National Assembly is there. When they present the police budget, how much do they take out of it? 20%, 25%, depending on the IG. And this money, money is funneled to them you know, from welfare funds, including you know, um, a paint, repainting, repairing the barracks, including buying uniforms from there. That's where they can hide all this money, which is mm. being paid for. So it's a complex problem. It's a systemic problem. Is and we need to carry out an holistic assessment okay. and look at how to fix the Nigerian problem. Thank you so much, Biodo Show, me a political analyst, and I also prefer to call him a public affairs uh, commentator. Thank you for your intervention. And uh, Chukum Maokenwa, thank you for staying with us from the beginning to the end. We look forward yeah, to you having so you soon to talk more on some of these national issues. Thank you for your time. Thank you. And uh, I'm afraid time is gone. We will have to stop it here. Plus, politics returns tomorrow with another interesting... Oh, did I just say tomorrow? Yes, it returns tomorrow. And uh, we'll be looking at another issue. Uh, I remain yours truly, Coyote Ladeinde, saying bye for now.